Um, I'm speaking to you today from the city of Burnaby, um, and we are um, located on the ancestral and unceded homelands of the Halkomilim and Squamish-speaking peoples. Um, Christy um, Collins uh, is our um, is a Victoria-based entrepreneur and web developer and the creator of Nomi Connect, an app for neurodivergent people to connect, meet, and date. Um, Christy feels that mainstream dating apps are lacking, and she'll explain more about this um, as she goes through her presentation. Um, she is she designed Nomi to fill the need for an online space in which neurodivergent people can find a partner or a friend. And so today she's um, joining us to explain how and why Nomi is an alternative path to connecting with others. And in her spare time, she will be reading, painting, or hiking on Vancouver Island. So with that, we'll um, I'll let you go ahead. Great. Thanks for I am single, time. never dated before, so. Yeah, yeah, we are taking a friendship first approach to the app. So I feel like especially for people who haven't dated before, that's kind of a friendlier entrance to the world of connection. Initially, it is going to be an iOS app. I iPhone and OK. Exactly. So nice. it'll be available in the Apple store in the first run. And then hopefully very soon we can get the Android up and running as well. Nice. So Christy, I've allowed you to share. Great. And so um, uh, maybe we can just see what Christy has to say. Yeah, a little bit more about me. I'm a self-assessed neurodivergent woman. Um, I'm excited to be on a journey of being formally diagnosed very soon. So if anyone has any tips on going through that process as an adult woman, that is more than welcome. <laughs> Feels overwhelming from where I am right now. Yeah, so I, I am originally from BC. I just moved back here over a year ago um, from living in Montreal for a few years. So now I am on Vancouver Island. I received training as a web developer in Montreal and quickly realized that I was very passionate about web accessibility and really wanted to get more into that realm. When the startup I was working for shut down, I decided to commit to working on my own company. So I've been working on Nomi full time for about nine months now. And so the stage that we're at right now is the prototype stage. So we are about, I would say, 70% of the way through building the initial prototype. So that's what we will be testing with folks. And then that will be the version that will be released in hopefully February. So we are planning on beginning testing late January, early February. And at the end, I'll um, tell you a little bit more about that. But if you know of anybody who would be interested or any organizations who would be interested in uh, helping with the beta testing, that would I wouldn't be mind. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Shoot me an email. So Nomi's story, the spark for the creation of Nomi came about when I was a couple of episodes into Love on the Spectrum, which oh. a lot of you might be familiar with. Is this <laughs> Conrad, the with Michael in it, the newest one? It was the um, the New Zealand version. Yeah, so good. So just for folks who don't know what it is, it offers a glimpse into the intimate life of a group oh. of autistic folks. Um, the relationship specialist on the show talks about the moment when people with disabilities or neurodivergent have to reveal to their potential friends or partners that they are neurodivergent. And I realized that the norm in my friend group is neurodivergent. And that's a big source of comfort and security for me and my friends, as there's no judgment or stigma about talking about our shared experience. I like it that's not scripted either. Exactly. I figured there must be an existing space to connect with communities and individuals where neurodivergence is the default majority. But I found that inclusive and connective platforms like this are few and far between, and none of them actually address neurodivergence. Um, and that, again, is a huge shared experience um, of my community. So that's how Nomi came about. 
Uh, we're a small team right now, but we have a part-time iOS developer and a few volunteers helping us with design, marketing, and tech consulting, and we're hoping to expand very quickly once the app is released. So what is the problem in current dating apps? <laughs> there are a few of them. Yeah. So first of all, accessibility is an afterthought. The core features are too expensive and there is a lack of depth in profiles. So most connection apps are missing out on the opportunity to make their platforms accessible to folks who identify as disabled or neurodivergent. And those folks make up 22% of Canada's and 26% of the United States population. Um, the average monthly premium membership for a dating app is $29. The average monthly income for people with disabilities in Canada, according to the government website, is $2.2,000. And most mainstream dating apps require folks to make an immediate decision on someone based on images and a few sentences about a person. The most difficult question you might have is, how do you know if it's a legitimate person or not? You're not getting scanned. That's right, exactly. So one thing that we want to do to prevent that is to enable um, profile verification. So someone would have to send a photo of themselves holding up a peace sign or doing something different. Uh, we want to make that obviously as accessible as possible. As Face well. recognition maybe? Yeah, maybe eventually. That's a good idea. Once we have the resources for that, that would be great. So we can kind of cross reference so first of all uh, one way that we can fix this is by having clean intuitive de design driven by accessibility so what that means is um, high contrast text screen reader compatibility uh, a clean user interface or seeing one thing at a time um, we can offer an affordable and flexible monthly subscription. So what we want to do there is employ a pay what you can model rather than needing everybody to pay a lot of money per month. So it would be up to the person how much they feel capable of paying. And more focus on authentic self-expression and interest-based matching. So like I said, it's not a swipe right or swipe left app. We want to have a bunch of thoughtful prompts to help you actually get to know somebody, like something that you would ask somebody on a first or second date if you really wanted to get to know them more in depth. Um, Interest-based matching, so we'll have you go through a few of your interests and then we will match you with people who share those interests. And we just want to allow a lot of space within your profile for self-expression. So whatever that means to the people using our app, we really want you to feel like you're actually able to show somebody a better, more holistic, um, not a better version of yourself, but a more holistic version of a dating app profile. So are there any questions about- How do you prevent when it's like, Maybe it's the legitimate person's account, but then they act differently in person. Yeah, yeah. So we want to help to prevent that through having more um, in-depth prompts, but we really want to encourage a more authentic expression of a person. So we feel like by having a space specifically for neurodivergent folks, that that will already help to cultivate a culture of authenticity and actually being able to connect through um, who you are as an individual rather than just like a few photos and a couple lighthearted joking sentences about yourself. Thank you for answering. You're welcome. All right, so for anybody who doesn't know what accessibility is, I'm sure a lot of you here do, but for anybody listening uh, or watching on the YouTube video after as well, um, accessibility is basically how easily one can navigate the world or in our case, our app. So first of all, is the app compatible with a screen reader? Is the page too cluttered or are there too many menu options? And are there captions for videos? So that's just a few examples of how accessibility is applied in a mobile app. Any questions on accessibility? 
And again, what is neurodivergence for anyone who's not familiar with the term? Quite simply put, we at NOMI define neurodivergence as a difference in one's structure and style. So that affects the way some folks learn, process information, socialize, and behave. Some diagnoses that are the most common among those who identify as neurodivergent include, but are definitely not limited to, autism, ADHD, dyslexia, Tourette's, bipolar, borderline personality, and anxiety and depression and other related mental health conditions. So NOMI is the bridge for neurodivergent folks to find one another who are, find other people who are looking for friendship, connect with their communities. So eventually we want to establish a community page where you can just freely connect with other people based on their answers to questions or um, finding little groups that you can make together, kind of similar to Facebook groups. And yeah, just really like deeply connecting with more than one person in your community. So we want like, we want to have a sense of a greater purpose and a deeper sense of rooted community. Is this going to be only in Canada? Do you know? We will eventually expand. That is something that I touch on a little bit later. So we will be expanding to uh, worldwide. And the third thing is to find a partner. So like I said, we are taking a friendship first approach in the very beginning, but we definitely want to have a dating aspect because that is obviously something that people really want. So yeah. <laughs> and so why do we call it a connection app? Why is it more than a dating app? We've come to realize through conversations with our community that people desire friendship just as often, if not more than romantic partnerships, and that a lot of people actually want to date people who they have a friendship with first. And in order to keep our platform as accessible as possible, like I said, we're taking a friendship first approach before expanding into community and romantic partnership. Any questions on that definition? There is going to be options like long term, short term, and stuff too. Exactly. Yeah. And what makes Nomi special? So, like I mentioned before, neurodivergent folks experience the shared barrier of having to reveal their diagnoses to their potential friend or partner. Having a dedicated space where neurodivergence is the default sets folks up for success, we believe. NOMI facilitates direct access to communities who can empathize with one another's struggles and respond to each other's needs. We provide the opportunity for people to get to know one another with the goal of minimizing stigma and conversations around disability, accessibility, and accommodations. We're committed to creating a safer, more inclusive space for Black, Indigenous, people of color, and folks on the LGBTQ spectrum. But this includes um, people like me, right? On exactly. Stuff? Okay. Yeah. So anyone who identifies as neurodivergent, anyone who identifies as having a disability, um, and we just want to help everyone to feel like this is a safer space for them, no matter what their yeah. orientation. And we're first and foremost a community building platform. So a lot of the dating apps on the market today are not necessarily a community building platform. They're very individualistic and we want to reintegrate deep connection with our fellow community members. Any questions on what makes Nomi special? Yeah, I have a couple. The first is, yeah. um, um, it, it, so how do you build that community? Like how, uh, what are the techniques or strategies that you use to make that distinction happen? Yeah, so I mean, first of all, we're hoping that by making neurodivergence the default, that already there will be a sense of like, okay, it's a sigh of relief, everyone on this app at least has an understanding of what neurodivergence is, and we already have that shared experience. So in the beginning, it will <clears throat> unfortunately necessarily be more individualistic because we can only 
apply the friendship first approach and then we'll integrate dating and then once there are more users on the app we'll be able to actually uh, implement that community aspect so what we're hoping is that this can be like the go-to space for um, events in your area so you can look for events and actually meet up with people online we're hoping to host um, nomi parties so whether that looks like speed dating or just like going out and dancing miriam yeah this is like a super quick question i maybe we already know but i don't seem to know what does um nomi stand for Oh, right. I, I should have covered that in Nomi's story. Um, so it's actually not an acronym. Um, I chose the name as a placeholder name. I didn't know what else to call it in the beginning and I had to placeholder. call it something. Mm -hmm. So a placeholder is like something that you put in a place to. So in our case, it was. Oh, Nomi, K-N-O-W, me, N-O-M-I. There you go. So that is part of it. Yeah. So I, my favorite show on Netflix is um, a show called Sense8. And one of my favorite characters on that show is named Nomi. So I was like, all right, this is a good name to call it for now. And until I actually figure out what the real name of it is, this is what it'll be. Okay, and then I was you. talking to my friend about it. That. And he was like, oh, yeah. So you called it Nomi because you want it to sound like get to know me yeah so, oh yep okay this is the name then <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> I think it's a good name i hope you're able to hold on to that um that three-part um concept you know where you individual um dating and friendship first dating and then community um, yeah. and it may not necessarily have to be sequentially that depending on how you are able to do it, it's likely that you can probably advance each of them um, at the same or somewhat at the same time. Um, so I, I think these are great objectives and I think it's what does distinguish you. There are, I believe, a few other neurodivergent um, apps out there. I don't think of them right now, but um, but yours, your focus on friendship first and the concept of building in community, I think really does distinguish you further. Um, and one more thing to uh, your question, Joette, is we want to also establish Nomi as a source of um, resources for the community. So we want to offer um, relationship, healthy relationship counseling. We want to establish a podcast where we share the stories of the people in our community. So we want it to really be like a go-to space to both connect with your community, but also to connect with yourself and like redefine what neurodivergence is to you as an individual and like how to navigate the world and relationships through that lens. So why now? Um, social media and inclusive advertising are helping people to become more accepting of disability in others and neurodivergence. Global online dating application use is on the rise, yet we still don't have a dedicated space for the neurodivergent population. And rate of diagnosis for conditions such as ADHD and autism has increased, most likely due to more knowledge and access to healthcare and a better understanding of how different conditions present in different genders. Um, those experiencing poor mental health before COVID-19 were impacted even more by the pandemic, especially those from marginalized communities. There's been a 2.3% increase in mental health related disability just between 2019 and 2021. Over 500,000 Canadians consider themselves housebound. This limits their daily interactions and opportunity to meet others outside of their home. And major depression affects appro approximately 5.4% of the Canadian population and anxiety disorders affect 4.6% of the population. So business model, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so the, the title of this I should have changed, but 
this is a snapshot of what the business model of other dating apps is and what the reality is for neurodivergent folks. Yeah, like Tinder, I think it's like $100 plus or something. So. It can be really expensive. So the average is $30 to $45 per month for a subscription to a mainstream dating app. Oh, so these are main other like other apps? Yeah, so this one oh. is the average cost to subscribe to a mainstream dating app these days. $4,500 is the average monthly salary of a single non-disabled Canadian, and $2,200 per month is the average monthly salary of a disabled Canadian. So what we want to do at Nomi, understanding that the people who we want to connect with don't make traditionally as much money uh, as the general population in Canada or in the world. So we want to establish a pay what you can model. And we believe that by having a flexible payment strategy, we empower our customers to make the financial decisions that make sense for them. So everyone deserves access to connection and this allows us to ethically generate revenue and support our own team. What does that mean generate them. revenue? I know I'm not good with those kind of terms. Not That's okay. Much. It's not too important, but basically we don't want to charge an arm and a leg just so that we can make money. <laughs> That's what it comes down to because we understand that our community doesn't have a lot of income to spare. So we want to ensure that people can access connection on their own terms with their own budget. So after a 30 day free trial, our suggested price is between five and $6 per month. We're accounting for 15% of our user base being non-paying participants through our inclusion program. So we will have a program for people who can't afford to pay for it at all because there are some people who just won't be able to afford a monthly subscription or commit to a monthly subscription at all. And we want that to be okay and for those people to still be able to access connection. And then just for ease, we'll have a semi-annual pricing plan as well. So you can pay twice per year. So does this answer your uh, question, Conrad, for how much um, we'll be charging per month? So just to make a few quick points on why we're doing pay what you can, I've mostly gone through this already, but we want it to be ad free for everyone. We don't want to sell data because a lot of the mainstream apps that is a big problem um, within the freemium model. So apps that offer a service for free with the option to subscribe, they sell data often of their clients. And you can access, everyone has access to all features. So some people don't have an advantage just because they're able to pay more than others. And we also want to employ a majority neurodivergent staff and we will pay them a living wage, um, especially the people in our community who historically do not make a lot of money. So yeah, that is why we prefer pay what you can over charging some people a lot and some people nothing. And now Conrad, um, this is our rollout plan. So eventually we do want to expand worldwide but in the beginning, we're planning a slow rollout across Canada. So first, we're going to launch in Vancouver Island and Metro Vancouver, followed by cities and provinces with the highest number of people with disabilities. After we have expanded to all of Canada, hopefully by April 2024 or sooner, we will replicate the process in the US. So we'll start to expand slowly across the states as well. Wow. But, and also, there'll be like distance-wise on on the app right yeah there is a distance filter on the app okay so just a few milestones of know me in march 2022 we built our website i was on the cbc live radio and the cbc did an article on know me that's where my team found me um we started the ios prototype build in june 
and we reached over 500 subscribers to our website so that's another thing if anyone wants to subscribe to updates go to the website and we'll let you know when it's released in your area and we are now also a part of victoria's tech organizations accelerator program so they're helping us with our business model and the plan of getting the app actually released <laughs> which so is what wonderful. do we sign up and all that i so I missed it. Yeah, so that's through the website. I, I think that you already screenshotted that information, Conrad. Yeah. But the website is at the end as well. It's just nomiconnect.net. So with any social app, we're not able to anticipate every situation or prevent everyone with ill intentions from creating an account. But we do want to establish at least the preventative measures that we can put in place. So we'll have profile verification. Everyone has to have their photos verified by our team before interacting with anyone. A like me feature. So we, if you, as the person signing up for the app, disclose that you have ADHD or you're autistic or whatever you choose to disclose, you will then be able to filter just for the people in your community, but not outside of your community and no unsolicited images. So in the first run of the app, we have cut out in-app image sharing just because we can't monitor every image that comes through in the very beginning. So we're just not going to worry about that at all. And we have an in-app resource page dedicated to boundary setting, healthy relationships, as well as in and out of app safety. So if anyone is curious about how they, what the safest way to meet up with somebody in person is, then they can go to our resource page, quickly go through those notes and meet somebody in a public setting, let somebody know where they are, that sort of thing. And you have the ability to block anyone in the app from viewing your profile or messaging you and report or flag any profile for team review. So are there any questions on the safety aspect? I can either walk people through uh, just a couple of slides of what the app kind of looks like just to get a visual. Okay, yeah. We don't necessarily have no, to do let, that. Let's do that. That sounds okay. good. Perfect. All right. So this is not everything. <laughs> this is just a couple of um, highlights for the sign up flow and what the homepage looks like. So first of all, you'll be able to say whether or not you're open to dating. We don't have all of the infrastructure in place to actually have people make a separate um, profile for dating versus friendship, but there will be a little way to say, hey, I'm also open to dating as well as friendship. And we have a bunch of genders you can basically add as much information about your gender identity as you want. And you can talk about what your interests are. So select up to 10 interests and that will help us match you with people who you may be the most compatible with. And so here you're also able to say what identity best describes you and then add more details about your identity um, in terms of disability or neurodivergence. And you have the option to have that visible on your profile or not. So we want to give people the most freedom to express themselves, especially in this way, because this is so personal. So we don't want to gatekeep anything. We want people to be able to uh, use the app whether or not they say uh, how they identify. And we also do not need to enable location services, which is a really big thing for a lot of people because privacy is very important. So we will just have you select your neighborhood this is how Hinge does it. If anyone has used Hinge before, you just Hinge use Hinge is expensive. Yeah. yeah, it is. So they don't require you to um, 
have GPS tracking basically enabled. So you just have the freedom to say where you live, zoom into your neighborhood, set your distance filter, and you're good to go. Is this like setting where to meet up? I don't... No, this is where you are in relation to other people. And so this is kind of what the homepage looks like. This is one profile on the homepage. So this would be a photo. You have the name, the pronouns. Um, you have a quick prompt. Hopefully very soon we'll be able to apply um, an audio feature like what Hinge has as well. So you can, again, get a more holistic uh, view of the person that you're looking to connect with. You have a few quick facts about yourself. And then if you're interested in seeing more about this person, you can click into their full profile and see a lot more information about them. So this would just be the initial like, oh, this person kind of looks interesting. Then you click into their profile and at that point you can message them. And you also have the option to save their profile for later. So you can bookmark their profile if you're feeling particularly anxious in that moment and you don't really want to reach out to someone immediately or start a conversation. And these are just the little filters that you'll be able to apply. There are a few more than these, but just to get an idea of like, you have control over the kind of connections that you make on the app. Will there also be a thing if they speak languages? Yeah, there will be. Yeah. I know this is a different one, but obviously it's just a, just a um, template. Exactly. Oh, I skipped one slide. So yeah, the very end is just, the prompt categories, just to show you that there are a lot of options for self-expression here. Great. And yeah. Really thoughtful work. Thank you. Uh, so tell us again when you envision it being launched in um, the Victoria area and the Lower Mainland. Yeah, so we are hoping to start beta testing by the end of January. Mm -hmm. and we want to launch the app by mid to late February. That's our goal. Does anyone so, have yeah. any questions to ask Christy? Um, Cedric? <clears throat> so first of all, Christy, thank you very much for your presentation. So I did come up with a few questions throughout the presentation, if that's okay with you. Absolutely, go for it. Go ahead. So first question is about the payment mod model. Yeah. So would you consider a model that's like ask five of your friends to download via a link and you get a month free? Absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely something I would consider. So that would be like a referral program. Indeed. Yeah, I like that. And, and Cedric, you noted that there's a 30 day free trial as well. Yes, I did see that in my screenshot. Okay, Perfect. And, uh, oh, sorry, continue. And my next question is, given that you have plans to roll out Nomi internationally, do you have plans to make Nomi compatible with screen readers of other languages like French, Mandarin, Cantonese, etc.? Definitely. Yeah, especially once we expand worldwide, that would be a top priority to ensure that people are able to use the app with a screen reader. So that would be included. Thank you. And two more questions, if you don't mind. Go for it. Um, the first one is, will Nomi be accommodating neurodivergent people who prefer to date non-neurodivergent people or vice versa? Yes, actually. Yeah. So that's something that we validated in our surveys. I was surprised by the overwhelming response of people who really want to interact with people who are both neurodivergent and not neurodivergent. So that's really exciting to me. I definitely want to integrate all identities into the app. I think that's important because for many people, so much of their day is spent with neurodivergent people, uh, I'm sorry, with um, uh, neurotypical people as well. Yeah. And so I think 
we um, get better understanding in the long term if we can facilitate both. Exactly, I agree. Cedric, did you have any more questions? La yes, the last one is, in my previous experience, in terms of the quick facts, the height of a user would only be able to be available in Im imperial units. However, I grew up only knowing metric units. So in know me, will the height of a user be available in metric units? That's a really good question. That's definitely something that we can we can put that in the accessibility settings. So that can be something that you can choose for yourself, the units that you would want to see that in. I hadn't thought of that before. Good thank point. you very much. That's yeah, all of my questions. Anyone else have any? Oh, Rebecca, please go ahead. Sure, thank you. Let me lower my hand, otherwise I'll leave it up forever. <laughs> okay, uh, so I know that you'd mentioned, I may have missed it because I'm actually at work right now. Oh, so I'm just kind of going back and forth between. Uh, but I know you mentioned the ability to let people get really in depth. And that's one thing that's kind of lacking with, you know, like what you said, you, you get like one or two lines on Tinder in a picture and you do the best you can with very minimal information. And I also know, I'm sure you do as well, that neurodivergent people tend to like giving a lot of information up front very quickly. I was wondering, um, so if you could go a little into like, say that you and I had matched on Know Me, um, and I'm going to see, I guess, a lot more information than I normally would. Like, well, how, how does that kind of shake out? Like, are, are there separate categories for like interests, beliefs? ethics, whatever, like how, how exactly does that get presented to someone on the other side? Yeah, so what we're thinking right now is doing the kind of timeline view of a person, um, kind of like what Hinge offers. I hadn't thought about categorizing it before into like breaking it down into um, different categories. So I think that that would be really helpful because we do provide so much context <laughs> to <laughs> ourselves. Um, so yeah, right now the breakdown would just be like you would see a photo of the person, you would see hopefully very soon a audio a bio or something with a transcript, you would see some quick facts, and then it would just go straight into prompt answers. So be prompt response, prompt response, and just kind of go from there. Oh, I just have that a quick works one. You, um, Rebecca, or do you have any other thoughts as to how you might like to see a profile from your perspective? I mean, I'm oh, I'm big into like data organization. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to choose a system, especially when you're looking for something so interconnected as what a human is, you know, yeah. like a lot of uh, questions about how you can efficiently present the most relevant data first without just leaving out huge chunks. But then you've also, you know, like you're dealing with a screen space of a phone. So you don't have a lot of real estate either um, to try, like, like you're more bound by the medium with different options. So no, I, I can't think of anything in particular. I think you've got a very cool and interesting challenge. Yeah. Uh, in doing something like that, I'm excited to see how it looks. Thank you. Miriam, go ahead, ask your After. question. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just sort of like, like I'm, <laughs> I'm far beyond the stage now where I would be using the app. I'm interested in it for someone else, but um, I actually met my partner on a dating app and I'm remembering what was, what was important to me. And um, the main reason it was successful for me is that there was a search function where you could search for, for example, everybody who was interested in hiking or everybody who was interested in singing or whatever. Um, the search function, uh, because I was interested in finding someone who enjoyed to enjoy activities with. So I'm just wondering if you're thinking about having that kind of a search function. That's one question. <clears throat> and the other one is um, with the interests, that I saw, um, I'm wondering if you would be planning to make it a little more specific. In, in other words, not just music, but types of music or singing or instrumental or jazz or uh, what other 
whatever other music they have nowadays. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, having a little more specific. So if people did do a search, they could, you know, not everybody who's interested in music is interested in the same musical activities or the same kind of music or art is kind of general, you know, like maybe having some more specific things and then having a search function that could find those things for people who, um, because I think that shared activities are one of the best ways to get to know people. So those were just two little <laughs> comments. Great, cool. thank you. Um, yeah, so in terms of, so with your first question, what we're thinking in the beginning is being able to select a few of your most important interests and um, filtering through the people who are interested in your most important interests. We would love to do a search function. That sounds like a great idea because it's true. Some people love to connect over, let's say, badminton or something. So you would want to find other people who really want to connect uh, through that as well. And I do think that breaking down the interests into more specific categories is a really good idea and is something that we would also think about for future versions once there are a lot of users with very specific interests. So I do really like that. Thank you. How do you prevent it for seeing if you have, because you don't want to disclose your disability right away, right? How, how do you prevent by not like revealing that you have one because you might not be comfortable right away? Yeah, you may not be comfortable right away. So how do you prevent that on the app? Yeah, so when you're signing up, you have the option to display what your disability or neurodivergence is on your profile. And you also have the option to not say what it is at all. Uh, we do, again, eventually want to have the ability to only display certain information on your profile once the person has matched with you, once you've matched with another person. And then at that point, you would be able to uh, show what your disability is if that's a piece of information yeah. you choose to disclose later on. Okay. And also, it I agree with what Miriam said, but you don't want to do too many options because then there'll be less to talk about in person. That's right? a good point too. Like in yeah. general, in general, I wouldn't put all the kind of music. Just put like in general what what like raw country that like. Yeah, thank you. Not too much because then less will be less to talk about in person. That's a good point, um, Conrad. Conrad, keep an element of a surprise. Um, I was wondering, as far as matching people, um, just since this is more community oriented from the outset, um, I don't, I don't know how to phrase exactly what I'm asking, and I had so much time to think about it too. Uh, I was going to ask, do you have anything in the way of something like a social gathering, like the phones app version of a social gathering, where people might get exposed to more people in the community or anything like that or how exactly do you see the the community building working out yeah so that is really interesting i'd love for you to expand on that maybe you can shoot me an email after as for how what that looks like for you um right now what we're thinking is just a simple maybe question of the day page and we would have people post their answers to that question. And then if you like what other people have posted, you can send them a direct message and kind of connect with them through their expression of what this fun question means to them. Um, so that will be just like a way to visualize your community right in front of you. Like this is a whole community responding to this question. And even as an observer, that would hopefully help to cultivate a better sense of community um, and otherwise yeah you can reach out to people through that page as well another thing is just in a simpler way we have conversation groups at, through score pegs society so one for women a monthly one for women at, adults and another one for um for uh, all adults Guys. generally so um and you know we try to start out with a a topic that's an uh, is a starting point, but the conversations are um, are in depth, and um, I think people, if you were to show up 
you know, um, on a few months in a row, you might really get to know people and make some good connections that way as well. So just find them on our website. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Any, um, any other questions? Will there be an option to be getting to like, either like in the beginning of that app to like either like by creating a profile like connect to facebook or like those kind of options yeah so we're thinking about it we will have sign up partners right now the ones that we're thinking of are google apple and then just signing up with a phone number yeah, and then we do want to integrate like your Spotify playlist. You can have some music on your profile and your top like song of the day or something. So some integrations with social media, um, Instagram, stuff like that will be coming further down the line as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Christy. This is a really interesting and innovative project and uh, keep us posted, drop me a line periodically. I'll try and collect, pass any resources or connections that I think might be useful to you your way. Yeah. And so thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank yes. you. I'll just wrap up with my little denouement here. Okay. So um, yeah, we're open to any sort of partnerships, um, letters of intent for grant applications are really helpful for many associations uh, that you know of or are a part of. Um, collaboration to fund NOMI as a research project is something that we're interested in as well, with the focus on how connection can improve the lives of neurodivergent folks. And uh, anyone who wants to be a beta tester, Conrad, you mentioned that you wanted to, so if you know anyone as well. Rebecca? Thank you. Um, just while we're here and while you said the second thing, I volunteer at um, Drexel University in Pennsylvania in the United States has an autism board that's made up of a bunch of random autistic people they found throughout the US and then just me in Canada. Um, the, but they're generally really open to collaborations and projects and like things they can track and do data for. So if Great. you have any interest in an introduction, I could pass an email somewhere. Or I something. would love that. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what would come out of it, but they're very interested in that sort of thing. So Great. Yeah, if you would like to shoot me an email after just so I have your email, yeah. then we can communicate about that. That would be lovely. Yeah, I would also love to be a beta tester. I'm a tester for work. So. Oh, great. Well, yeah. that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And yeah, so we're looking for beta testers, like I mentioned, partnerships with charities. Um, if you know anyone who invests in special projects like this, we are very interested in meeting with independent investors. Uh, we're considering launching an equity crowdfunding campaign. So if that's also of any interest to enough people, then we can get started on that sooner than later. And yeah, if you know anyone who would be interested in just using the app once it's released, send them over to the website and they can sign up for updates there. This is my email and the website. And thank you so much for coming and listening. Thank you again.